In celebration of Women's History Month, Bass Public Affairs, a 100% woman-owned business, is proud to salute women pioneers. We hope that you'll stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest and learn more about these fabulous, unsung women heroes. This week, we salute Daisy Bates, a heron of the Civil Rights Movement. On September 25, 1957, the world watched as nine African-American teenagers entered Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Cameras and newspapers captured the sound and images from that day. America rightly remembers and honors the Little Rock Nine. However, the significant role that Daisy Bates had in orchestrating the event is rarely remembered. In 1954, in the Brown v. the Board of Education decision, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that separate, in fact, was not equal and put an end to segregation. Bates, who had been raised in the Jim Crow South, knew that the school board of Little Rock would not move to integrate the schools if they were not challenged. Bates and the NAACP challenged the Little Rock school board in court, forcing the school board to put together a plan to integrate the schools. Daisy Bates and her husband, L.C. Bates, recruited the nine students who would lead Arkansas and America into integration. For months, Bates counseled the students and their parents. Before, during, and after that important first day of school, the Bates home became the central headquarters for the integration plan. When Ernest Green became the first African American to graduate from Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. attended the ceremony. Daisy Bates was not able to attend. In Little Rock, she was more famous than Dr. King, and it was feared that her presence would create a riot. Today, movements of social and cultural change are quick to compare their struggle to the civil rights movement. When we really think about the real danger that herons like Daisy Bates faced, such comparisons ring hollow. Every day that she involved herself in the civil rights movement, Bates understood that she was risking her life. During the struggle, white supremacists threw a rock through a window of the Bates home. On the rock was tied a note with five simple words, stone this time, dynamite next. Bass Public Affairs is proud to salute Daisy Bates for her courage and wisdom in the face of danger. I never know when they're gonna pass here and blow this house to bits. We still got thugging telephone calls. We hate mail. But nevertheless, I feel if I'm gonna live in this town and live with myself, I must oppose hatred and prejudice in any way that I can. <laughs>